Okay, so whether you're making an alarm clock or some kind of timer or, you know, <laughs> you know, something else, it's very useful to be able to make a procedurally controlled timer. So head over to defont.com, which is a website people use to find custom user-created fonts, and let's type in LED or maybe just alarm to download any font that has the look that you're going for. And after installing this font, I then headed over into the GIMP to essentially create an image sequence of each of the 10 digits we'd be using, namely 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0. And I then found this website, which lets us quickly turn this into a sprite sheet much faster than, you know, doing it manually instead. And the idea here is basically going to be the same as any 2D sprite-based game where we are going to sample one image at a time, which is going to let us create an animation if we wanted to, or in our case, it's going to let us pick any custom time we want, like 12.15 or, you know, 3.45 or 4.20. Point is, you can add in a plane with the sprite sheet, which right now is sampling all the digits, and scale down our UVs on the X by a factor of 10 to be able to show only one digit at a time. Let's add in some notes to control the selection where we're going to be translating by multiples of a tenth on the x-axis, and to fix this indexing being one off, let's just subtract by one and turn this whole thing into a nice little convenient node group. And perfect, we have a node-based digit selection thing, which even seems to round if we, you know, exit the zero to nine range. So let's copy this over and give this thing its own controller, where if we then isolate the left from the right, we can now control these values individually. So here is 12 and 45 and a bunch of other numbers, but wait, shouldn't we be typing this into just one field instead of manually separating the first and the second digits. I mean, I mean, that's the point of using nodes in the first place. So here we have three two-digit numbers. We have 13, 15, and 18. And our goal is to take these single inputs and somehow get the information about their first digit being the three, the five, and the eight, and their second digit, which in this case is all ones. Because if we can do this, we can now have a single input instead of putting them in individually. Um, in this case, if we want to extract the second digit or the ones digit is probably what we'd call it, like the three, five, and eight, it's super simple in this case, right? We subtract 10, 13 minus 10 is three. We subtract 10 from 15, we get five. We subtract 10 from 18, we get eight. So in some sense, uh, the formula for extracting the first digit is you subtract 10, assuming that we have ones here. It's not 23, it's 13. But um, even if this was a two, a three, any other number, this would still work because remember UV coordinates repeat um, as we go along the X axis. So we have this property that even if we exit the zero to nine range, uh, we still get the correct digit, you know, modulo uh, 10. So even if this was 23, we subtract 10 and in the node world, we'd still get three. Uh, 35, 55, whatever, we'd still get five we'd still get eight as long as you subtract 10. A, a bit more complicated, how do we get this uh, tens digit, right? In this case, it's all ones, but it could be any other number. Uh, here's a simple formula. If we take this whole input, 13, and divide by 10, so not subtract, but we divide, we get 1.3. In this case, we'd get 1.5, 1.8, etc. You take this and then you just get rid of the whole fractional part, everything after the decimal. Well, that gives you the correct thing. So one point, or sorry, 15 divided by 10 becomes 1.5, we truncate, or we get rid of the decimal part, and that gives us the thing. If we had 99, and we want this uh, tens digit, we divide by 10, that gives us 9.9, .9. truncate, get rid of this, and that gives us the nine. In other words, one of the formulas is you subtract 10 to get the ones digit, and you divide by 10 and truncate uh, for the tens digit, and this, of course, can be generalized. Okay, so let's do the same thing with nodes. We subtract by 10 for the first digit, divide by 10, and truncate for the second digit, and check it out, we now have reduced this to a single controller. And this, of course, can be generalized to however many digits you want by just repeating this process and setting our division to the next order of magnitude for each consecutive digit. And, uh, yeah, there you go. It's another tutorial by me, CG Matter, and you, well, you watched it, so thank you. So thank you for making it to the end of my tutorial. You are awesome. And you know what else is awesome? The sponsor of this video, Skillshare. And Skillshare is a online learning community with thousands of classes going over a whole bunch of topics. I tend to look at the ones that have to do with digital things, whether it be Photoshop, 3D, of just filmmaking in general, stuff like this. And the whole platform itself is geared for learning, so there are no ads. It's super affordable. And there are online workshops that you can join at a certain time. You know, those are more like uh, live streams uh, so you could really focus on I'm gonna learn a skill and here is the path I am going to take to obtain that skill, I guess. With the premium membership of Skillshare, you can also watch premium courses. And one in particular I wanna recommend is how to bring your illustrations to life in 3D uh, with Blender, hosted by Remington that you probably know as Southern Shoddy. This is a course about taking an illustration, something that you make in 2D, and how do you convert that into a three-dimensional project, you know, with models.
modeling, texturing, and whatever else would be involved in that process. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description are going to get a one month free trial of the premium membership of Skillshare. So you want to try this thing out for a month, you click the link in the description and you've done it. Go learn whatever it is you want to learn, but it's probably going to be a digital skill, but that's up to you.